Thank you guys for joining us this evening uh, for another session of New Jersey City University's Department of Educational Technology uh, Spring 2021 webinar series. I'm Dr. Samantha Bonna, and I am here with Giulio Danino. He's going to be hosting a wonderful session for us this evening that's exciting on the use of emergent technologies such as virtual reality and educational applications. We're super excited to have Giulio with us this evening uh, to share some of his experiences and his uh, research with us in regards to virtual reality. Um, this program is made in part by the Department of Educational Technology at New Jersey City University, and we invite you to uh, join us uh, for our additional webinar that will be held this evening. It will be the last one in our series on using Google uh, workspaces to create um, stellar academic environments that's hosted by doctoral candidate Catherine Neves. And so that'll be at 7 p.m. this evening as well. As always, these sessions will be available asynchronously for you to view at your leisure. Um, and I will drop the link to our YouTube channel in the chat for you guys, or you can find us at njcu.edu forward slash edtech. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Giulio Danino, who's going to begin his presentation this evening. Thank you so much, Samantha. Thank you for the intro. And uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, so good to see, uh, see all of you here. And uh, so good to spend this time with you to discuss what I've been researching for the past uh, couple months. Back in February, uh, my department and I, I have proposed to procure this device. It's known as the Oculus Quest 2. And it's a virtual reality headset. And it's uh, one of the first, I'm sorry, excuse me. It's one of the newest um, additions to this type of technology. And I'll be discussing how it is uh, applicable to education and uh, as well as um, other aspects of it, which could be used for personal growth. So uh, I would like to share my screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. One second. Let's see, how do I do this? <laughs> no. Let me know if you can see what I can see. I think I see Samantha. <laughs> yep, you could see me. All right, can you guys see that? My, uh, my screen here? I see still myself, so you would have to um, hit share. And then um, you would hit your desktop and it would share what you have on your screen in terms of your desktop so you can toggle to different windows. Okay, so so windows, correct? Or uh, yeah, so you, Go you ahead. hit share and then you hit desktop where it'll ask you desktop or application and then you can toggle between which ones you'd like. So it'll share everything on your desktop that you have. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's not, not really what I'm seeing here. Uh, I'm going to share the entire screen. So um, what do you guys see here now? I just see myself. I see our, our chat window. OK. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties, everybody. Um, let me see. There you go. Oh, you can see it? Yeah, there you go. So you can just start oh. it from, uh, yeah, from the, the beginning there. Excellent. All right, so here's my title screen, Virtual Reality for Education in 2021, presented by me, uh, Julia Danino from the Department of Educational Technology at New Jersey City University. <clears throat> so let's begin with a, a short history on virtual reality. Where it all began, it was with uh, this gentleman. His name is Sir Charles Wheatstone. He was a British physicist and an inventor of uh, stereoscope, which is what they called virtual reality back then. Uh, he was from England and he invented it in 1838. And two years later, he was an, awarded a medal for it. And basically the science behind it is that the brain combines two images viewed by each eye of the same object taken from different positions, which create a sense of depth and immersion, which is what creates the three-dimensional view or known as 3D. So as you can see, throughout the years, it was improved upon um, with almost 200 years of development. You can see over here, NASA had uh, utilized it. This was back in 1989. Uh, 
this astronaut here is using, um, actually also using the power glove from Nintendo, which was, uh, I don't know if anybody remembers that, uh, that was integrated into virtual reality at that time, which is, is interesting because that is uh, where it went today, which I'll demonstrate as well. So um, let me continue on. Over here, basically, uh, there were, there's been studies done that show that virtual reality is capable of tricking the human brain. And it's uh, sort of equivalent to people who perceive supernatural, be supernatural beliefs and uh, detecting agency of basically, you know, like objects that are not necessarily there, but it's basically tricking the mind. That is essentially what virtual reality does. And in this study, they found that all the participants, or I'm sorry, excuse me, the majority of participants were able to detect um, objects that had no agency. So uh, it's interesting that, uh, you know, the brain, the brain is e easily tricked. So. I'm sorry, here, Julio. We, would you mind yeah. going into presentation mode so that way your screen is right. larger for us on our end? Thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, where's the slideshow? Presentation mode, let's see. Current slide. Okay, how's that? Can you guys see That's that? That's great. Yes, thank you. All right, so this is the Oculus Rift. This is the pinnacle of uh, direct-to-consumer virtual reality, I would say. Uh, it came out in October of last year. It's priced at about $299 for the 64 gigabyte. The version that I have is the 256 gigabyte. Now, um, I'm not necessarily sure you need all of that space, but um, if you're gonna be invested deeply in uh, utilizing this thing, I would definitely recommend uh, the 256 gigabyte uh, version because I don't think you can expand upon um, a smaller version. And uh, another phenomenal thing about this uh, device is that it's an all-in-one setup. Now, back in 2014, I had uh, experimented with the Oculus Rift, which was the first iteration of um, this kind of virtual reality. It was produced by a gentleman named John Carmack, who was actually one of the lead programmers for the old video game Doom. And uh, he started this company. I mean. By the time that this uh, this uh, device had come out, he had already left the company, and now they are um, they're bought out by Facebook. So this this is actually um, provided by Facebook. Now the thing about the all-in-one setup that makes it different from uh, the previous one, the previous one you had to have um, you had to have like a sensor tracking or sensor tracker. You had to have um, so so much more. There's so much more to do. It wasn't exactly as user friendly as this one. With this one, you literally don't even need a computer. You can, it's like you can, you can play um, applications that are native to it. You can buy from the marketplace on there. And there's plenty of options just from that alone. But if you really want to utilize the full potential of uh, the Oculus, I would recommend procuring the Oculus Link, which is about $79. It's well worth it. That's how you can hook it up to your your computer. Now you can use other third-party wires as long as they're uh, a C-type. However, I've used certain ones and uh, they, they had some connection issues. So I really would just recommend going with uh, the Oculus Link. And uh, basically that will allow you to utilize platforms such as Steam and um, I'm sorry, SideQuest is another one which I'll be getting into. It is um, Bluetooth compatible, so you're able to hook up uh, your headphones to it. You have Bluetooth headphones. It's actually considered an experimental feature to this device because, as I understand it, other ones uh, don't necessarily have that. And um, right off the bat, if you will be using this for educational purposes, it's really for, for children who are 13 and older. So we're talking about middle school and high school, college. And you know what, this is even a great device for professors and teachers to utilize for their own education and how, how they can actually apply it to the classroom as I will demonstrate later. 
Now, when you're setting up the Oculus, uh, this is another revolutionary um, point, uh, I'm sorry, a revolutionary aspect about this device is that you have to create a guardian field, I'm sorry, guardian mode, and basically create a field around you, which, will, which is where you will interact with your virtual world. As you can see from the illustration below, um, there are two uh, hand devices that you utilize to navigate through it. You basically draw this, um, you draw this zone for yourself and you can incorporate, you know, chairs, couches, and uh, you can sit down. And the thing is, is like, if you, if you were to stand up in your, in your virtual environment, it would be as if you were actually standing up, sitting down, like your view will go lower. So um, the bigger your field is, the more you can interact with your virtual environment, which is why I think that perhaps a classroom, a small classroom would, would not be ideal for this type of device, but perhaps a gymnasium or an auditorium would be uh, better. So then you could truly utilize it for, um, you know, for, for, for the best purposes possible and for best safety. And uh, there are features that you can go in and out of uh, virtual mode. They have, it's also another experimental feature. You basically double tap on it from the side of it. You have to enable it yourself inside the um, device itself. But this is actually, this is really an invaluable um, aspect of it because taking off the, the headset and then putting it back on, you get flustered, you can break immersion. And uh, it's, a, it's a general pain, but this is really a great feature. So moving on, we can see that there are many professions that already utilize virtual reality. And you can see uh, in Australia, they have uh, a fire, a fire um, sorry, fire departments basically practice being in uh, dangerous situations by utilizing virtual reality. They're one of the first countries to do so. Uh, you can see police as well, uh, training for dangerous situations. Um, what's interesting is this pilot that you see on the side, he's, at, he's utilizing it for navigation purposes while in flight. So not only for training, but actually on the job use. Uh, it, virtual reality is, is truly uh, beneficial. Same thing with construction workers and doctors. So moving on. And there's, uh, you know, case studies to prove the effectiveness of virtual reality training. We can see, for example, um, you see the results right there, like 83%, more than 70% more efficient in uh, medicine, for example, or military training, for example. They, there was more, there was better results in people who had not used uh, virtual training for uh, Air crew training, 17% did better in game-based simulations versus conventional methods. So the Marines, the Marines can vouch for it. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's also virtual memory uh, houses, which is, helps with recall. It helps with um, memorization. So that's like another beneficial aspect of virtual reality. Moving on. So let's get into some applications that could actually be used for the classroom. I was a history major, and I find this absolutely fascinating that you can create virtual environments to recreate places that may not exist anymore. For example, like Notre Dame, which was tragically lost a couple of years ago. Um, there are many simulations. BBC had created in 1943, uh, Berlin Blitz, which showed the bombing of London. Uh, this, this is, um, you know, this is, this is good to, to illustrate history for children. Um, Nefertiti's journey, which is another fascinating one, moon landing. So, you know, imagine your imagination is, is, uh, basically sky's the limit. You can find a whole lot of stuff on here on, um, I'm sorry, on different platforms to basically, um, create these virtual environments for, for children to, to explore, as well as science. I mean, they have the International Space Station virtual reality. They have 
uh, 3D anatomy. They, this was this one VR protein was featured in a, a study that came out in 2020 about its its uh, application to teach medical students about you know biology and, and and things of that nature. And then you also have um, other dangerous things such as chemistry that that uh, you know create a virtual environment for it that you don't have to worry so much about children mixing different uh, chemicals and, and using Bunsen burners and stuff like that. You can, and as well as uh, people who care more about like the ethical treatment of animals, you can dissect frogs virtually. So, you know, there's other things, physical fitness. This is, this is definitely good for gym teachers. You know, people on average lost eight calories per minute playing cyber synth riders. And uh, a lot of it, I mean, a lot, a lot of um, virtual reality is, is kind of sitting in place. However, with the with the perspective aspect that I was mentioning earlier, you could do squats. I mean, you could get a leg workout playing boxer, box VR. You could uh, basically get a full body workout and uh, it has shown to have results. So I feel... Perhaps some children who may not be as engaged in, for example, gym class, you know, maybe this would be more stimulating for them than playing uh, soccer or playing basketball, where they, this, this, could base, this could be beneficial, I feel, for people who, who may not like traditional uh, gym class. Another thing is public speaking. And this, was, this is what I, what I mean by... Um, Professors and teachers getting involved with virtual reality for their own education. Um, you can have a virtual classroom. Say you're a new teacher, right? And you know you never taught in a classroom before. You have limited experience. You can literally create a virtual classroom that you can speak to. And the great thing about it is that it will actually rate your um, speaking. Um, and basically it'll, it'll uh, help you practice. You have, you even have, um, virtual reality, uh, speech classes that will help you train for specific jobs and specific sectors. Forbes magazine said that 95% of users who practice a virtual reality were better prepared for real world situations. So it's really, it's really fascinating. You can create different, different environments. And it's really up to your own imagination how uh, to best utilize this because there really is a lot of content out there. Julio, if you wouldn't mind, yeah. could you please come back to the slide about history? So that way um, some of the participants could take a look at some of the uh, resources uh, and, and yeah. jot some of these down. Absolutely, absolutely. I implore you to uh, definitely jot this stuff down. And the great thing about it is that a lot of these are free. So um, it's really just a matter of uh, subscribing to the applications and, um, if, and, and you know, they don't, they don't really take a lot of, it's not, it's not a lot of uh, difficult installation. So um, yeah, I, I feel that, um, that this would be extremely interesting. If I was a student, if I was a student today, I would find this extremely interesting. And um, the cool thing about um, the cool thing about this is that you know children they can kind of like respond to this already because you know they play video games they play computer games they um, for them it's 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 familiar it's very familiar so if uh, does everybody have uh, is everybody uh, good with this now? I'm just going to keep moving on. I think we're good. Yeah, here's another one in case anybody else wants to jot them down. The calculus one definitely would have helped me. <laughs> I mean, I was never that great of a math student, but I'm more of like a visual learner. And um, I think that definitely would have been uh, conducive to uh, my education. Calculflow. All right, this is another one in case 
Anybody wants to jot them down? Hollow Point is interesting. I think it's a it's a combat simulator, but um, you know it's it's mostly it's mostly for um, physical fitness purpose. All right, moving on. Here's another one: Ovation, Virtual Speech, and Virtual Orator. I haven't tried um, one of these yet, but I'm pretty interested in uh, virtual speech. I believe that that is uh, definitely an interesting program, just for the fact that it offers so much, um, so many options for for um, not just public speaking, but also for um, you know, basically applying for other jobs. All right. So here's another one, um, another uh, topic that is salient today, which is, uh, you know, dealing with racism. There was an interesting um, video. I'm sorry. Video, I'm sorry. Video, interesting application that was created at Columbia University is called 1000 Cuts. And basically it puts the user in the shoes of people who uh, experience different things from their own um, ethnicity or gender or um, background. And um, I think it's, uh, it's very fascinating. This is not the only one that's out there, but this is probably one of the more famous ones. So I think that that is definitely um, conducive to uh, teaching people about inclusiveness and to understand other people's struggles. So I'm um, just going to move on from this. And another application of virtual reality is how it can help with basically treating um, post, you know, di different types of psychological and um, psychological issues that some people have, such as phobias, social anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, eating disorder, psychosis. Um, this, is, this has been used, and I can definitely see its effectiveness. Basically, there is um, the situations that you can create. Say if you have a fear of heights, for example. Um, there, was, there was a video I want to show you guys in a bit, how you can like basically be in a simulation where you're standing on top of a building and you can trick your mind into thinking that you're there and possibly you can, you know, perhaps min minimize your fear of heights by doing so something like this, or they have other stuff with arachnophobia. They have uh, other, other exercises that people can explore of how they can uh, utilize virtual reality to create situations that they are uncomfortable in and try to overcome. Now, let's talk a little bit about where these platforms can be found. Now, um, two big platforms are Steam, which you definitely need. For both these platforms, you need the Oculus Quest for, I'm sorry, the Oculus um, Link for. But as I mentioned before, there's, there's a plethora of um, applications that can be utilized native to the Oculus. So you don't necessarily need a computer for it. But like, as I said earlier, if you want to get the maximum use of it, I would recommend getting that and uh, exploring what's on these uh, platforms, which I will definitely show up. We can go through it together. I can show you some of the things that are on there um, specifically for education. And uh, there's many other, um, just for entertainment or other documentaries, that um, and other other applications that you can utilize. I mean, um, there's and the thing about, for example, uh, a platform such as SideQuest, it's all user made. Basically, these are people who are uh, programmers and modders, independent modders, independent programmers, and um, what they do is they utilize this platform to promote their creations. And sometimes they get picked up and they, they become part of, um, of the official Oculus uh, platform. 
if they're if they're popular enough. So that's another application for, for example, uh, college students who are interested in programming. They can get into designing virtual reality, and this is SideQuest is a platform that they can utilize to promote their creations. And the great thing about it now is that it used to be free. However, now they've allowed uh, developers, independent developers, to monetize their creations. So that is fantastic for them. And I think that it's, uh, it's, it's a great way to um, basically create more of a, you know, a better platform to expand upon. Some more educational content that's found on SideQuest. Here are some, these are all user created, for example. Actually, the vaccine was created by a, uh, a university, I believe from Copenhagen. And it was basically trying to create a uh, virtual reality uh, situation and examining a uh, virtual reality situation for people who want to take the vaccine. And uh, it was developed by the psychology department if you're interested, it's, it's called the vaccine. If you want to explore a little bit more about it, we see what we have here Grand Reality, which is virtual reality piano. I believe that you can hook up perhaps like Casio, um, you know, keyboard and it simulates as a grand piano, for example. Or you have Arkeo, which is um, a city builder. So the there's like there's so much content that we can I could I could be on here for four hours talking about it, but uh, I definitely wanted to show you some of the the more uh, interesting ones that I found. So let's keep going. YouTube is a fantastic is a fantastic source to utilize virtual reality for free, and this is just if if anybody would just I'll, I'll leave this page up for a bit. If people would like to just uh, write these down or explore explore some of these, they're uh, all educational. Uh, they were shot in 360 degree views. Some of them are just 360 degree uh, virtual worlds, or they were not used with cameras. But um, that's another that's another aspect of virtual reality, which is interesting. We had just ordered. Uh, camera which records about 360 degrees or 180 degrees and uh, soon I'll be um, uploading content myself from um, virtual reality videos that I'll be shooting for example like create you know like a walk through Jersey City and uh, just, just just off the top of my head um, so you yourself could do this the cameras are not not too expensive. I believe the one that we bought was about $4.99. Um, so a little bit more than the Oculus itself. However, um, you know, if you have the imagination to do it, I think it's, it's, it's fantastic because um, despite the fact this, is, this has been up for a few years now, um, there's, you know, th there's not as many uh, virtual reality videos as you might think but now you're starting to see a few more come on there so you know you could really make a mark if you decide to uh, endeavor to do something such as that so if everyone is good over here we'll uh we'll keep moving another great application which is google earth and google google expedition now google earth is really fascinating you can go it's, it's just like google earth for for your phone or your your computer however you're interacting with it in um in a virtual environment it's it's very fascinating if, if anything i could probably show if we have a little bit of time i could show you guys a demonstration of how that one works um you can take us to njcu if you'd like and it's, it's, it's really cool because um Everything looks like a, a small scale down model. And you feel like you feel like you're walking around a model of the world. It's, it's, it's definitely interesting to say the least. And then you have Google Expedition, which is um, I, in a way it kind of like it builds on what Google Earth is, but it allows you to explore sites more. It, it, this, if I was going to um, teach a classroom, I would definitely utilize Google Expedition, 
to show them about things such as the Taj Mahal, learn about UNESCO world sites. You can take them there. And uh, it's a little bit more um, in depth than Google Earth, for example. Now let's talk about the limitations and challenges with virtual reality. Right now, the cost is still too high for most individuals. Um, and especially too high if, for, if you want to give each student in your classroom a virtual reality headset, such as the Oculus Rift, I'm sorry, the Oculus Quest 2. Now, um, that doesn't mean it's going to be like that forever. Um, like I said, it's $299 to $499. As we know, technology, as time goes on, things get better and cheaper over time. So if, uh, if you're not convinced now, I would definitely keep my eye on the market for, I'm, I'm sorry, on the development of future um, virtual reality headsets, because I'm telling you with this, with this version, it has really entered a new, a new realm of usability. Before it was clunky, before it was, too hard for uh, not too hard i'm sorry it was it was it was it required a little bit more um a little bit more installation than i would say a, a casual person would a casual person just wanting to experience virtual reality would want to put up with um so i think that it's only going to get better from there especially since a company such as facebook has invested in this development I think the Oculus Quest 3 is coming out next year, possibly, or I'm sorry, this year, possibly around uh, the same time as the last one. So um, if you wanna wait for the next iteration, I think it might be worth it. And uh, another major issue, which is one that I experienced myself is motion sickness. And let me tell you, it's not fun. <laughs> I thought to myself, oh, you know, I could just, kind of, uh, I can hack it, I've done it before. Like I've, I, I've, had, we've had, I've had experiences uh, in the past with, especially uh, first person perspective uh, games, for example. Uh, initially they made you sick. I remember long ago, I, I had, me and my cousin were playing and playing this one game and it made me sick because we weren't, we weren't exposed to it yet. But over time you develop a tolerance to it. And uh, it's called your VR legs. Now um, you might get it. You might you might just never develop B VR legs, uh, VR legs because um, is a, there there's there's uh, there's this thing called um, I'm sorry, it's uh, cerebral discord, I believe. It's when um, your eyes are perceiving move or perceiving movement but your body is in movement or your body is not in movement so it makes you feel um, nausea uh, i'll get into it a little bit more i have another slide that has a few more uh points about that so uh, you know it's it's a, definitely an issue especially with games that have or programs that have high quality graphics i find that right now at least um, the best kind of virtual reality experiences are those that have relatively more basic graphics because uh, it's easier on the eyes. And um, it's, it's just, uh, I mean, you really got to kind of uh, experience it to really understand what I'm talking about. But it's, it's equivalent to just being seasick, if anybody has ever been seasick. And then there's a small segment of the population who are just, it's in, they're incapable of uh, tricking their brain. Um, I'm not sure what the exact percentage is, but there is a subset of people who are in, incapable of truly enjoying the virtual reality experience, which is unfortunate for them. And um, I would say it's still a little too, too clunky. And, and after a while, it does become uncomfortable. So you're really going to want to um, you know, keep your time using it short perhaps a couple hours, probably the most I've gone is um, at least two hours using virtual reality before, um, you know, becomes uncomfortable. And that's for a variety of reasons, because perhaps like the front is a little too, um, a little too heavy. Uh, the back part is not, uh, it slides off. 
there's, there's, uh, they still have a few more ergonomic uh, hurdles to jump for it to be um, really good. And um, it's really, I mean, it's user, it's more user friendly now, but unless you really like tinker with it, you might not, uh, you might walk away from it. But um, if you're really passionate about uh, understanding how to use it, I think that uh, you'll be able to do it. And unfortunately, according to a new study, it said that um, most VR headsets don't have an IPD, which is properly fit for females, for example. A lot of stuff was uh, developed uh, for men. And um, they found that the participants who, uh, who joined in, the, uh, that females had experienced more uh, sickness from um, motion sickness from, from utilizing it. It's because there is, um, there's a depth uh, there's a depth in their in the space of their eyes that um, that I believe is uh, it needs to be adjusted to. I mean, a lot of these you can adjust. Uh, for example, you could adjust. I don't know if you guys can see me or you guys just see the screen. We see uh, you as well. <laughs> yeah, over here. I mean, you could adjust. The, I mean, it's 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 not much, but um, it could be an issue for some people. But hopefully, in the future, they'll make it more for everyone and it won't just be um you know sp not specifically geared towards men but i, I guess um, by accident i don't know <laughs> that that was the designer's choice i don't think it's fair but uh hopefully they can address that especially with this recent study that came out and um as i said before the cause makes sensory signals to the brain the most common one is that your eyes register horizon movement, the liquid in your inner ear did not. And um, basically your body assumes that you're poisoned. So it, it triggers uh, nausea, it makes you want to throw up, which is not pleasant. So obviously. So there's tips to reduce it. Um, I've, I've, this is this exactly the same as um, motion sickness as you would get anywhere else. So. Uh, eat or suck on ginger or peppermint, uh, focus on a static frame. Some games or some programs may have that feature where you could just focus on uh, a frame that's not moving and uh, it, could, it could help to minimize nausea. And then, you know, definitely, if you definitely feel it coming on, it's not gonna get any better. You're not going to tough it out. If you start to feel nausea, take it off. Uh, take a breather, jump back into it in a couple hours and uh, try to, um, you know, try, there, there's, there's ways to minimize it in gameplay by uh, specifically the issue comes from turning. For example, if you turn from side to side, you will feel it will be rough. And that depends on, on uh, the type of graphics that you're playing with. For example, if you play a high quality uh, video game um, and, it, and it's a totally immersive 3D environment where you can move from side to side, you might get sick. However, a lot of games now offer a, a feature where you it can turn, it, it, it like kind of clips to the next um, angle. So it's not like that motion. You don't get that like that horrible feeling when you turn, it just like clips one to the other. And um, that's a workaround, but I mean, it's not perfect, but it um, definitely helps. And after a while, you know, just like when I, everything else, just as the example I, I was talking about before, um, with time and exposure, uh, you'll be, a, you perhaps will increase your tolerance to a virtual reality and get your VR legs. But if you don't, I would, uh, I would definitely try to um, utilize those other points and uh, well, I mean, we're not we're not done yet. So uh, I do. I how, how much time do we have? Let's see. We got another. I, I can show you guys. Uh, I can show you guys a video if you like, or I could I could do uh, Google Earth if you'd like. Um, let's see. You know what? I have these windows open. 
he was the um, he was the fear of heights. Fear of heights video I was talking about earlier. And uh, the video really, the YouTube here doesn't do it justice, but when you have it on, it's you see, you see what I'm talking about. We have some other stuff here. This is another, another uh, software program. This is, by the way, this is all on SideQuest. Um, like I said, this is paid content. You might have to pay for this one. Um, some of them you may not have to. But for example, this is another one, Everyday Inclusion for Oculus Quest, uh, Bias Training by Equal Reality. And it puts you in the shoes of this, this lady and her, and it shows you, it basically puts you in different scenarios, such as the workplace, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's fascinating to me because uh, I think that this could definitely help people help people understand where other people are coming from. We have other interesting stuff. This, this would be definitely useful, I think. Basically, a virtual reality simulation of how to utilize fire extinguisher. I've read so many stories about people whose uh, homes burned down because they didn't know how to utilize a fire extinguisher. We have other stuff such as uh, more um, videos about uh, you know coronavirus awareness and protection. It's an interesting simulation over here. You can see how disease spreads, the virtual simulation. Over here, another one for inclusiveness. A simulation of people who, who live with intellectual disability, how they experience life. I know that this is definitely good for uh, educational purposes, STEM education and VR. I mean, the sky is really the limit and what you can do here. Virtual gallery, fantastic for middle school students who don't live close to a museum and give them a museum experience. And uh, yeah, this other one I wanted to show you. It's, uh, you see over here, uh, this, this is now on um, another platform, but it started here. And this developer, was able to have great success with this application right here. I showed this one earlier as well. Some of these are featured on Steam. I mean, there's so much. CPR simulator, very important. You can see how the person is doing it in real time. I mean, this could be for your own personal development. I mean, you don't necessarily have to be training to be uh, an EMT to, to appreciate how this is useful. But I would say other than that, thank you. And uh, I'll take some questions if any of you have questions. That was a lot of information, Julio, and there was a lot of applications here. So just give anybody an opportunity to um, to ask some questions. I have used some of the virtual reality, like early iterations myself, um, and have found them, like you mentioned, to be a little cumbersome. Um, and hopefully, you know, and as I've seen through your presentation, it looks like they've made significant changes uh, to the platforms themselves. Um, one of the tools that I've used for K-12 um, that 
you know, I'm not having a lot of money was a tool called Paniform. And I dropped that in the chat. So that is done where students, um, they, they draw in grids and they can create um, colorful projects. So that's a really neat um, one as well, where students can come in there and they can uh, take a look at um, creating different opportunities. So on my end, um, and you can see my screen here, uh, this is what panel form looks like. Um, it's virtual reality for everybody. Um, so to be more scalable, right? Um, you could use a tool where anybody can use VR creations. You can just simply paper crayons on a mobile device. It's low tech. It's really inexpected, inexpensive and expandable. And so students would create things like this on a grid and then they use their cell phone and they look at the objects um, through the lens of this, this website, Paniform. Um, and there's videos here that show you how to really use it. Um, but it's it's actually really cool. You simply take a picture of the image, you upload it, and you could see how it becomes virtual reality through your cell phone, um, and it, it moves into life. So students can use even make virtual reality YouTube videos, just like you see here. So it's a very simple, easy tool to use, and I dropped that in the chat. So that was my first foray as a K-12 teacher in using it nowhere near as amazing as the resources you shared today. That's fantastic. That's uh, yeah. This is sky's the limit with virtual reality. It's uh, really it's um, what it, what's out there is um, you know what we could think of. I'm sure they they have stuff out there for it. And like I said, like there's a lot of opportunities for people who have ideas. They can use some platforms to create them, such as the um, the side quest. So that's wonderful. So there's a question in the chat for you, Julia. I'm not sure if you saw that. Sure. Let me see. Maybe this continues in our app. Is, uh, is this from Kevin? Yes. I see. Is there another app that you would recommend for simple? Sorry, Polygon shapes. Um, hmm. I really wish I could answer that. Um, unfortunately, I, I can't think of uh, of um, an application in that particular particular subject. But as Samantha, Samantha definitely put a good one. Three um, D shapes, three D. Yeah. So that one might be a, a good tool to use to take a look at. Shapes 3D is great. Um, it's geared toward geometric shapes, particularly. Oh, oh I was going to mention, uh, there was that one app that I had mentioned. It was uh, Accio, which is uh, the city builder. That's, um, you can go in there and you can, it's very, you know, create shapes. Everything's very malleable. You basically can build a city. So it's uh, definitely geometric shapes. So you might want to check that one out. Now, Julio, there's another question for you in there by uh, William Shapiro asking for the link to the study about the discrepancy between male and female experiences with motion yeah. sickness. You wouldn't mind um, sharing that study uh, for everybody in the chat as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to do that right now. Let me see. Just let me know if you guys get it. That's great, Julio. Yes, thank you so much. Excellent. No problem. And now just for everybody's, um, you know, heads up and you want to be able to look at some of this information in terms of viewing asynchronously where you can find this to rewatch the session. Um, I dropped a link to New Jersey City University's YouTube channel there. Um, the video will be processed and uploaded to our YouTube channel. And you can see not only Julio's uh, session this evening, but other sessions that we've hosted as a part of our 2021 uh, spring lineup. And then those from last spring as well in 2020. So there's a treasure trove of uh, different resources and tools with links to some of the information. And I'll provide, again, some of these links that Julio has shared with some of these resources in the description of the videos for you. Uh, so you can then uh, see those as well when you access that asynchronously.
So I just wanted to see if anybody else has an additional questions or uh, commentary for Julio. Um, I think this was great. This was wonderful. Thank you. Julio. Thank you, Thank you so you. much. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, for setting up the whole webinar and uh, definitely it's been, uh, it's been a pleasure. You're very welcome, everyone, for coming. Thank you so much. And I dropped in the chat um, additional information for you uh, and as to where you can find um, access, again, to the YouTube videos um, and more information from the Department of Educational Technology at NJCU.